Peter, you are now telling us that the nature of the Catholic Church, which we are part of, and you, a wonderful member and example, because you take deep concern for these matters, but you do it with tremendous gentle courtesy, even with regard to the leaders of the church who are fulminating away, issuing their lightning bolts. And you're reminding us that this big family, which is our church, has the resources. A mother of a family will try to bring a certain order, say, you're not going to say that prayer anymore. We're only going to say this prayer. And suddenly the family resists because it's got a loyalty and an affection that extends through and beyond the present leadership of the church to all of the leaders of the church over all these centuries. And we remain Catholic in the largest sense in that great democracy of the ages, including the dead. And it, what we've seen listening to you, what we've heard listening to you is a great sign that by simply remaining as we are, kind of a little bit cantankerous, a little bit disputative, disputative, continuing to discuss and to propose and to suggest that in the end, when these present leaders go, we will be part of that group which held firm in our time both the right doctrine, but also the right spirit of holding that doctrine. I think you're a tremendous example of that. This is what it means to be a Catholic. Yes, amen to that. As, as, far, as, as far as I'm concerned, it, it really comes down to, to something as simple as this. If the liturgy that the church prayed for 400 years, 800 years, 1200 years, 1600 years. I mean, depending, you know, it's, it's one and the same continuum of the liturgy, even though it develops over time. That if that, if that, if there's something wrong fundamentally with that liturgical tradition, with that Lex Orandi, then the Catholic church is not the true church to begin with. And I don't hold that because I have faith in Christ and I have faith in the Catholic church. And so for me, you know, if, if, if Paul VI introduces a new rite Maybe he has the authority to do that. Maybe he can offer that to us as an option, but it cannot mean canceling out the right that the church has used over all those centuries that so many saints have prayed, that's, that, have, that has, has been the nourishment of the Christian people for all of these centuries. That's impossible. Um, and really, when, when, you, when you dig down, and I've read a lot of these people, a lot of these liturgical reform uh, reformers from the from the post-World War II period all the way to the present, when you dig into their writings, you actually find that they hold to the Protestant thesis that the Catholic Church went off the rails at some point, that Catholic worship, Catholic liturgy uh, was corrupted at a certain point and remained corrupted for many, many centuries. Bunini held this, for example, uh, that the way the church was worshiping for centuries was wrong. Okay, that's a Protestant position that can never be a Catholic position.